G'day and welcome back. Today I've got a HMV receiver. It's from about 1954-55, so same year as me. Now this style was fairly popular at the time, so there was a number of models by different manufacturers look very similar to this. Now this is another radio that was sent to me by a friend. He wants it uh, fixed up and working. I'm not going to go mad on this one. I'm just going to fix it up, make it look nice, and uh, he can use it to listen to. It uh, has a bit of sentimental value for him. He did send the knobs and some other stuff with it, so I've got everything I need. It's, there's nothing missing. I notice there's a bit of glass missing off the dial here. Uh, that's not in the bag, so I'm not sure what we'll do about that. As you can see there, the uh, back's in uh, pretty poor condition. Uh, this is where the screws mount to here, and they've pulled out, so the plastic's just broken away. This is discoloured slightly, so the heat's got to it. He tells me that all the plastic that's missing from here is in the bag that he sent, so... Hopefully we can just glue it all back together. Yeah, there's the model number there on the back. All right, I'll take the back off. We'll uh, pull it out and have a look. Well, there's the back off. Um, when I remove the back, the bit of broken dial glass fell out. So we've got that. I can hopefully glue it back on. I've taken it out of the case. It looks all right. It's a bit dirty, of course, but uh, that's to be expected. Uh, it's a five valve set. Uh, there's a rectifier output there. This tone capacity here, it looks like it's had a bit of attention from rodents, so let's hope that's not through the set. And I'll flip it over, we'll have a look underneath. There's the bottom of it, and all the caps have been replaced with mustard caps. Now these capacitors came out in the 60s, so I don't know when this was done. Here's the filter smoothing cap, it's got two 16 microfarad caps inside it, and it's been modified so you can mount it underneath the chassis there. Yeah, normally that type would sit on the top. I'm just going to check the output transformer primary. So it should be uh, here, there's a red wire there. It should come back as blue to the output valve. I think we should get somewhere between four and 500 ohm. Uh, 0.412 K ohm, so that's uh, 412 ohm, good. I'll just check the secondary on the transformer while I'm here, which I think is those two there. So we've got 834. We'll go to ground where the center tap is. So it should get 433 there, and we've got uh, 401 there. Alright, well, they should be okay. I'll just check the uh, primary on the transformer. 77, so that's okay. It's not going to ground using a DMM. So hopefully that's okay with power on. I'm going to put some power on it and I'll try it out. I have absolute confidence it's going to work unless there's some minor issue somewhere. Uh, its speaker is still in the case, so I've connected it to the shop speaker. All right, we're all set. Uh, dim bulb. I've got 230 volts going in. Let's see what happens. One of the lights is on. Two lights are on the radio. Down to 19 watts. That's about right. Dim bulb didn't come on. Maxon 24, 11 perfect aim at $36. Temp 7, Sunshine Coast, Junction at 23, Phantom Falcon 7, The Avenger 151, Run for Glory 480, Dr. Zeus 420 and co-favourite, Epic Girl. Okay. Earlier in the week, the US passed the 50 million vaccination mark and Mr. Bar Music. It's Tire Power's best buys on big brand sale. Buy three selected Falcon tires and get the fourth one free at Tire Power now. T's and C's apply. All KQ. Available everywhere with the iHeartRadio app. Now number one for podcasting. All KQ at iHeartRadio Station. News. Sounds around. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Benane. A group of anti-vaxxers has gathered outside Health Minister Greg Hunt's electoral office in Victoria protesting against the COVID vaccine rollout. It was filed in 2015 in the state of Illinois and nearly 1.6 million users there. Who said... So I've barely got that volume control off the stop and it's so loud. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem. Anyway, that tone control's not working at all. I'll just cut that capacitor and see what happens. It's a day. Plenty of focus, of course, around the prospect of Brisbane hosting the 2032 Nothing. Olympic Games for the future. Oh, yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on there, whether the control's broken or what. 
So I think the next step is to just clean it up, get it all cleaned up, get the nicotine off as much as I can. Then I'll go through and replace um, capacitors like that. There's an electrolytic up here. That's the cathode bias electrolytic for the output valve. But I think that's all it's going to need. A few components, uh, a clean up and glue the case back together and this glass. I'm out in the workshop now. Um, first thing I'll do is get these valves out. And I think I'll take this glass off. Hopefully I can glue the broken bit of glass in there without too much trouble. And this is quite heavily coated in nicotine. Everything's yellow. That's yellow. Even the plates and the condenser are yellow. So I'll just get a cloth and a brush and some cleaner and just sit here and, uh, and try and wipe it all off. And I'll also flip it over and do the back side too. Underneath has just got a coating of uh, nicotine as well. So I'll get started on that. You guys have a cup of tea. I'll be back in a minute. All right, there it is. Um, I've actually spent nearly two hours on this, trying to clean it, and it was not easy. It did not want to come off. It had a wax all over it, plus some nicotine. Anyway, I got it all off. I've cleaned everything up. It is much, much cleaner than it was. It won't make the radio go any better, but it does look a bit neater. Now, even the wiring is just covered in yellow. This, this used to be white, I think, and that I can't get that any cleaner than that. That's it. I'll take this inside to my little service desk and replace any components that need to be done and we'll check everything out and make sure everything else is okay. I'm back on my little bench again. Um, this looks much cleaner now that it's inside. There's still a lot to do, little nooks and crannies I couldn't get to outside and I've been working away with uh, little cotton buds or Q-tips to uh, remove all the little bits that I just couldn't get and underneath they're still pretty dirty. So I'm gonna have to keep working on that. In the meantime, Yesterday when I tried this, it had uh, a few problems that I want to look at before I do too much else. I'll just put some power on it. It's on dim bulb still. It's warmed up and the volume's right down. What I noticed yesterday was you only just had to put the smallest okay. um. smallest amount of volume on and you got it's very loud, very quick. Now, I don't think I've struck that before, so that's something new for me. Now, the other thing was that this tone control didn't work. Um, I tried cutting the... Um, capacitor made no difference I just rigged another capacitor across there and that made no difference either so those two problems I want to fix before I do anything else there's no hum in this radio so I'm not busting to change the capacitors as yet before I run the radio too much I'll just check the bias on the output valve I'll, I'll check between the cathode and the grid and we'll see what we get there yeah minus 4.74 okay so that's okay so I can comfortably keep working on this now I've got two problems on this. One of them's tone, and here's the tone section here. There's a fixed capacitor here, and there's a fixed capacitor here, but it goes to ground through a, a variable resistor or potentiometer. Now, this is the capacitor that's been chewed off, and I cut it, and then I put another capacitor across there, and it made no difference. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, something wrong with the uh, potentiometer, perhaps. So I'll just concentrate in that area. I think that would be worth checking out and see if that actually works. The other problem I had was with the volume and uh, the volume controls there. So you've got full signal sitting there and this controls it. So you would imagine that there's something wrong in here. I guess if that was not getting to ground, like there was a break in the uh, resistance there. So I'll check for continuity across this resistance here and uh, make sure that's getting to ground. So I think I'll do this first. Maybe the tone problem is related to whatever's going on here. The radio is not powered. I'll check continuity between that uh, resistor in the potentiometer. It's supposed to be 0.5 meg, I think I read. So that's a meg. It's a meg pot. It's got the wrong pot in it. I've put my probe on the wiper, so halfway should be should be about there, and it should still up, be up near a meg somewhere, but it's not tough. So it's the wrong pot, and it's linear. And actually, I'm looking at it, and someone's had a very amateurish attempt at filing that down. So somebody's changed the pot, and they've put totally the wrong pot in. I've got a new pot here. It's 500k, half a meg, and it's an A, which in a lot of cases means that it's an audio pot or a log pot. Don't go by that, because different countries have different um, coding, and I think the Europeans, I think they use uh, A and B backwards. I'm not sure, but I know that you can get A's. And they're actually linear pots. So I'll just connect my meter across there and we've got half a meg. 
I've put my clip lead on here. This is where the audio signal normally comes in, and this is the wiper. That's where it normally comes out. Uh, I'm on full, and it's the full reading of the pot. And if I go to about halfway, it should be just down. Yeah, it is. So it's only dropped 60k in that half a rotation of the um, the pot. So if I keep going, it'll just go very, very rapidly towards the end. There you go. So three quarters of the way, and it's down to 200. Yeah, okay. So that's a log pot. All right, I'll put that in and we'll see if that fixes it. I've struck a bit of a problem with this wire. This is the wire that's carrying the audio signal and the insulation is just falling apart inside it. This has still got the old rubber. So it's just falling apart and it'll short to the ground um, screen here. So I'll have to replace the wire. It runs along here, uh, over to here. I was looking at what I have. All I have is this individually sheathed wire. So I don't want to use that. So what I've done is stripped off the outer shield of a piece of coax. And then I can run a bit of the proper colour wire through. There we go. And then if I pull it tight, it'll close down onto the wire. And that'll look pretty good, I think. So I'll put that in the radio and uh, we can test it out. I've replaced the old wire there. That's come out okay. I've soldered it onto the original uh, points that it was soldered onto on the case. So I'll flip it over. We'll give it a try with the new volume control. Okay, let's give it a go. Dim bulb is on. Uh, when Mick uh, Brookside came, it was an absolute boom. That is much better. It's still very touchy, but it's uh, certainly controllable now. I tell you, of all the little tidbits... Yeah, that's, that's almost normal. So I'll leave that at this stage. I'm happy with that so far. This is a rumour that I've read on as well too. So um, one of the original investment companies was called Grosvenor International. Now I've connected that capacitor up and the tone's working now. So I'll just replace that capacitor and we'll be right. And there's another one hiding around the corner here. I'll replace that as well. Here's the pot I just took out, and it says 1 meg slash A, so you'd think that would be a log pot. But I've got it on halfway there, and it's reading about half of the value of the potentiometer. So A and B, depends which country you're in or where the pot came from, <laughs> it means totally different things. But that is definitely a linear pot. This tone capacitor here, easy enough, I can just solder a new one across there. This electrolytic is part of the cathode bias. And it connects the cathode to the secondary of the output transformer. And there's the secondary, and there it is connected to the secondary. That's it in the circuit there. Normally it would go down here parallel with this resistor and be grounded. But in this, it goes up here through the secondary and then gets grounded there. And that just gives a bit of negative feedback onto the cathode, which of course is reflected into the output from the valve. There it is, 25 microfarad. I've got a replacement here. It's 22 microfarad but a fraction of the size. I'm thinking of um, just maybe drilling this out and uh, popping that in there and uh, hiding it inside, seeing this is on top of the chassis. I've mounted this in the drill vise with a little clamp I made and I'm going to drill it out. And I'll drill it a bit bigger than uh, what I need, so it's got a bit of uh, room there if it decides to let go one day. It's got somewhere to go. There you go, and uh, that's done. Now I'm back at my desk again. Uh, there's the hole, there's the little capacitor it has got to go in there, and uh, I didn't give it quite as much room as I thought. Uh, this is the negative lead. I've got to get it down to this end. Uh, I thought maybe I could run it under the plastic here. So I'll just stretch it a bit to get a start. There we go. This is hookup wire, of course. I'm not going to get through there. All right, that's good. All right, that looks good. I'll solder that in and I'll put a bit of Baker's soldering fluid on here. It's a bit tarnished old lead, so that'll clean it off. I'll go and clean that soldering fluid off with a bit of water. I put an extension bit of uh, hookup wire here, I'll just solder that on. And a bit of heat shrink. 
I've got a bit of hot glue here. I'm going to glue it lightly in. I don't need to pretty much stay there. I'm going to get this capacitor in position. And it was down there somewhere. There we go. It was like that. So I'll solder that back in the same place and I'll never know. I'll put a new capacitor in here. I don't think I'll try and restuff this one. And there it is. If I plug the radio in, make sure it works and see if that tone control works. Okay, power on. Charges. When in view basic plan information documents, visit energyaustralia.com.au. Queensland residential customers only. Conditions apply. $50 sign up credit per new energy account applied to first bill. No, no, wrong music. Not this time. Okay, tone control's working as well. I think the next job's going to be changing the uh, filter capacitors. Uh, now there's the two filter caps as we looked at before. I will take that out and replace them with the two 16 microfarad capacitors there. Pretty straightforward this one. I'll just sit exactly where that was. Now I'm not going to bore you to death while I change it. I'll come back when it's done. There's the two new caps in there. They were very easy to fit. I put a bit of a heat shrink just to, I don't know, make it look better. The rest of the capacitors in here are mustard caps and they're considered fairly reliable. Nevertheless, I'm going to replace them. I'll also check all of the resistors and make sure they're okay. Uh, these aren't going to take long, so I'll be back in a few seconds. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? All the capacitors are replaced. I replaced a number of uh, resistors. They're a little bit above um, specification, but not too bad. I think I've got, what, four there, and there's about seven caps and the uh, electrolytics. I was hoping to find something wrong that would explain the increased volume or the very touchy volume. My thinking was that there might have been different voltages on screens and plates than there should be. I'll, I'll just flip it over and we'll try it again. I'll just see if it has made any difference. It's warmed up. I'll see if it's any different. No, it's exactly the same. So nothing changed in there. I didn't really think it would. There's one more thing I should check, and that's the voltages, particularly on these last few stages of the radio, and just see if they're okay. I checked all the voltages and they're perfect. There, there was nothing unusual there at all. I did record it, but I'm not going to include it in the video. It's really not that interesting. I'm out of ideas. I do have all new valves. I can just swap valves over and just see if that fixes it. I don't think it will. Uh, there is one more thing I can do, though, if the valves don't do anything. Just to make sure I've tried everything, I've replaced all the valves with new valves, new old stock. When they first come onto the farm, what were some of the comments that they, they sent to you about it? And it's exactly the same. So... It's not the valves, I'll put all the old valves back. So as a last resort, what I've done is put a 1 meg resistor in here, so the audio signal's coming through here, goes through the 1 meg resistor before it hits this resistor, and hopefully that'll drop the signal enough to allow a bit more control. Uh, there's the resistor in there, I'll flip this over, we'll see what it does. Right, I've got power on, and let's see how we go this time. He remembered, yeah, and you paid up. I bet you there's, like, of all the things remembered, like, his wife works here as well, and, like... That's much better. It's much more gradual. Well, respect to you for paying up. Yeah. Uh... With that sorted, there's another job I need to do before I do the alignment, and that's change the dial string. This is the bottom of the radio. Here's the dial string. There's a tiny bit of damage there, and it's a bit furry around there, and there's a bit more damage there. So I'm going to replace that, because uh, that will fail eventually. To change the dial string, it's a pretty simple run, this one. It just goes around the pulley there, around a pulley up here, and then along around another pulley, goes through the spindle, and then back on the pulley. So it's very simple. What I thought I'd try on this one, and seeing it's not broken, was to just attach a new bit of string, just pull it all the way through, and then reattach it. Sounds easy. Let's give it a go. I've set up. I've put a bit of masking tape over the new string to add a bit of tension to it, and I've also put some tape around all the pulleys so that the the string won't tend to fall off. Right, the first thing to do is cut the old string. I've managed to tie the two bits of string together. It's, it was a bit harder than I thought. I need to remove the pointer. So if I can pull it around, the tuning spindle may stop the, any of this happening. Yeah, it's just not going to work. I've had to undo it from the tuning spindle, so I'm really no better off than if I just run it manually. Anyway, we'll keep going. <laughs> it's okay, it's a complete failure. I'll just wind it as I normally would. I'm 
just attempting to wind the spindle again so I've got to go two times around here I think okay and through the hole and we're done that's all done everything's on the pulley it's wrapped around the spindle so uh, that's about where I want the knot to be or the string to end up so I'll just put a bit of black marker on there now my initial plan was a complete failure but as I said it's an easy uh, a little run so yes there's no trouble and actually having the old string attached to the new string and pulling it through wasn't such a bad idea it saved you sort of fiddling around trying to get around corners so it wasn't a total loss anyway now I can't put the pointer back on till I put the glass on and then align this at the end there so I'll leave that off for now I did a video on repairing the glass dial and I cleaned it all up and cleaned all the edges up glued it back together uh, managed to repaint it and, and it came up okay but I'm not going to show that bit of video here for a reason that I'll explain later on. But I will use this dial glass just to do the alignment. Uh, to set the dial pointer, we've got to run the two gangs all the way in. So I'll do that. Now I've just got to move the pointer along to align the, the marks on the end here. There's the two marks on the dial. I've just got to line the pointer up with that. So I should be able to slide it along. I've adjusted that back and forth a bit and uh, it's come out spot on. Cool. According to the instructions the IF is 457.5 and you adjust the oscillator at 615 and the antenna at 15. I'm going to check the alignment, I'm not going to spend much time on this. I've connected an analog AC meter to the plate of the output valve and this lead I made up specially and it's got a 0.01 capacitor built into it. And of course the other side goes on the chassis. I've also got a 0.01 capacitor connected to the grid of the mixer valve. And I'll connect my signal generator to that and to ground. The speaker's going through a speaker dummy load and I've got it selected the speaker at the moment. I've also got the signal generator set to 457.5 which is the IF of this radio. I've got power on and we've got a signal going in from the generator. There it is. turn the speaker off. I'll adjust this IF first. I've put a little bit of plastic on the end because they tend to fall off. The screwdriver falls off because you're looking at the meter and that looks about right doesn't it? Bit of a jump there. Ooh. All right. Alright we'll try this one. That's about it. Now I'm on the underside now, so I'll try these ones. And that one's spot on as well. And there's the last one. And that was spot on as well. So I think it was pretty right. I will go and do these again and the bottom ones as well. Uh, I'll do that a couple of times, make sure they're right. Uh, I'll come back and we'll just check the dial position. I'll check the dial alignment. I've set the frequency meter on 600. Before I do the dial, I'll have a look around. This is the oscillator coil, and there's an adjustment for that on the back. There's the antenna coil, and there's no adjustment. That's fixed. There's a tiny little mark on the scale here, and that's the 600 kilocycles point. I'll align the pointer with it. That's going to look a bit out on the camera view there, because the camera's not directly overhead. So if I turn the volume up, we might have a signal there. No, not really. No, it's a bit out. I'll turn that off. I've realigned the pointer with that dot and I've silenced the speaker. We'll see if we can tune that in. There it goes. Whoa. 
All right, I've changed scales now, so uh, I should be able to do it now. Just getting louder. There it is. All right, so that pointer is now aligned at 600. And now the next stop is 1500. Uh, there's 1500 there, so I'll just center it. Camera's over the top this time. Good enough. I will set the frequency meter to 1500. There. We should have a signal there if I turn this up. Nothing. Uh, let's try and adjust it. Oh dear, it's way off. Oh yeah, okay. So I'll need to adjust the oscillator, and I think that will be the oscillator. I'll turn it up again. I will leave the speaker on this time. This is the antenna trimmer. I'll adjust that to get maximum deflection on the needle. So I'll turn the volume up again. That's a bad hit. So I need to go back down here to the 600 and I'll just make sure that that's still at 600. Here's the oscillator coil here, so I'll just trim that to make sure it's still there. And get a little bit out. Alright, that's it. Alright, that's it. Uh, I'll go back to 15 and just double check that again. So I've set the generator and the dial at 15. We'll see where we are. Alright. Alright, I could be doing this all day. I'll, I'll just keep doing this. I'll come back when it's right. That took at least two trips more before I got that right, but they're, they're perfect now. So because I've adjusted the oscillator, I need to do this antenna again. Just to check it. Alright, that's it. That's the alignment done. I've done everything I can to the chassis, it's working really well. Now I did find a, another dial glass, another person had one in Australia. They're going to post it to me. So I'm going to try that out, it hopefully will look better than this one. In the meantime I'm going to see if I can glue this case back together. Here's the back of the case, uh, I'll flip it over in a second. Uh, you can see here it's got two pieces missing out the back. Uh, I've got all the pieces of plastic that are missing. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just take this speaker out. We'll get that out of the way. Here's the speaker. It looks in excellent condition. There's a couple of marks down the side here. These are press markings from when they make it. I think they just use uh, paper mache and, and press it out. So they're just little marks there. There's no failure point there. Here's all the broken bits of plastic the owner sent. I'm pretty sure that one goes in there. Like that. If that fits in that end, this must fit up here. Oh gosh, there's a lot missing there. So it must, must be that bit there. My plan is to glue all this together and then I will reinforce it in the back. Uh, it's going to have gaps in it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. To glue this together, I've got some Loctite super glue plastic. I don't endorse Loctite or super glue. I'm just that's just what I've got. Uh, it's got an activator, and it's got the adhesive. So you apply the activator to the plastic, and then the adhesive, and it's supposed to be a better bond on plastic. I have to apply the activator to the both surfaces of the bit of plastic that I'm gluing. Now I've got to wait 60 seconds. Now that's 60 seconds, this says to apply some of the glue to the one side. 
and then just fit it together and hold it in position. Okay, that should be it. So we'll let that dry. With this one, I think I'll glue the two broken pieces together. Uh, this is one of the pieces I was going to glue together, and then I realized this little sliver sits in there. So I'll glue these two together first. Forgot to turn the camera on. I've glued that little bit in there. I'll glue these two bits together. I want to apply the activator to it. Got time for the adhesive to go on. I'm just going to glue this last bit in the top here. All right, I'll just let that set now. I have to do the back as well, but I'm not going to bother filming that. I'll just glue these together. We'll come back and then work out how I'm going to blend it into the existing plastic. I've glued those bits in now, so I'm just going to let this dry. I'll leave it dry overnight at least. Then I'll start working on it. We'll see if I can blend it in somehow. There are some gaps I'm going to have to try and fill. And just see how it comes out. I've moved out into my workshop and I've let these repairs dry overnight. Now, as I said, I'm going to back these up. This uh, won't last at all. If I was to put any pressure on that, they would just break again. What I've done is shape some aluminium to fit in the back here to reinforce where those cracks are. The cracks are along here. So I'll put that on the back there and I'm going to glue it on with JB Weld. I've made that a fairly good fit. I sort of had to sculpt it in a little bit. It bends quite a number of ways at once. Uh, but anyway, the JB Weld will fill up any crevices. I've roughed all this plastic up with a Dremel. I've also dremeled the back here to give it a good key. Once that's all set, I hope it's strong enough so if someone accidentally grips it from this hand grip in the back, uh, it will take the weight. I've got some JB Weld here. I'll just mix it all up. Oh, that looks good. That's uh, quite uniform now. All right, I'll just put it in position. That looks pretty good. I've got some little clamps here. I hope I can get those on. Well, I've got four clamps on there. I think that's going to be okay. It's squished the adhesive out all around. I was a bit nervous about these two guys here because they're actually on the repaired uh, bit that broke off and I've glued together. So I'm using that as a as a clamping point. So I was a bit worried about it breaking, but it's it's okay. And I've just rested the clamps on a couple of pieces of wood up here so that it's not pulling on it. So I'm going to leave that overnight. It'll take uh, at least overnight to dry properly. I've also made some little doublers to go here where the cracks were on the top so uh, that will strengthen those up and when we screw the radio back together hopefully it'll be enough to hold it and stop it falling apart again. So the procedure for fitting these is the same as that. I'll rough it up, uh, use some JB Weld to glue it on and leave it overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and see the result. I've glued those other two patches on and as I said we'll come back tomorrow and see how they come out. But it's uh, pizza and a movie night tonight, so I'm just going to go and make a pizza. And we'll see you in the morning. Uh -oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it's the next morning. These have been drying overnight, so I'm going to have a look at this one. I'll leave this one for a minute. I've got to do a bit more to this one. But I'll take the clamps off this one. Oops. They've come out alright, the glue's covered it very well. So I'll clean all that excess adhesive off and uh, I'm going to give it a coat of paint as well. Just back to this one, there's... Oops. Alright. <laughs> ah, broke it. Yeah, well, alright. <laughs> There's a little plastic dowel here that engages in the front of the radio so when you lift it up it spreads the load into the front part of the case as well. I had to grind it away to get this doubler in. I'm going to try and rebuild that with a bit of JB Weld and just make it a bit stronger hopefully. I've quickly knocked up a bit of wood here to 
fit in and uh, just give me a guide uh, so I can fill that up and uh, it'll kind of shape it to what I want. And I'll put some uh, clear tape around it so the adhesive doesn't stick to my mould. There you go. I'll just try and I'll just try and clamp that in there. I'll fill this little bit here with JB Weld to connect onto that dowel and uh, when I take this off I should be able to shape it and make it look nice. Alright, I've mixed up a bit of JB Weld. I'll just pop it in there. I think that'll be okay. I just hope I can get the piece of wood out again. I went to the Radio Club auction yesterday and this was in the lots and it had a perfectly good glass on it. So I was able to buy it and it had some other parts with it in the in the box that it was in. So I actually sold those off. So I ended up only paying $5 for this, so that's not too bad. So I get a good glass. It's also got a volume control in it. And I'm just interested to try it in the other radio to see if it makes any difference. I don't think it will. Uh, I did originally think I could get this one going and try it in this radio, which would be a better option. But the base for the uh, 6M5 is destroyed and the output transformer is missing. So I'm still tossing up whether to, to try and get it to work. It'd be interesting to see how it performed. What I've done now is I have put a valve in there. I've got an output transformer I've put in there. It's just wired loosely. The 6M5, I put the pins into little the connectors that are left on the base. I had to solder one wire on there. I've got the speaker from the other radio on there. I'll give it a go. I've got it on dim bulb. We'll see if it works. I really just want to see if this volume control is going to work properly like a normal radio. Some noise. We should have stations around here somewhere. Um, is a different category. That's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's nothing new to agree with that, John. I mean, we, we're not. When we're, not, we're not ready till we could. Oh, there you go. That was easy. <laughs> you know, abusive relationships. Uh, you know, with physical. Uh, this is the volume control here, and on the other one, about there, is so loud. You, you wouldn't want it any louder than that for normal listening. But this one's going um, way past it. Maybe there's a, a world that's more complex than you. And that's a very hard thing to understand. When you... So that's working how I would expect a normal radio to work. What I should do is take this volume control out of here and transpose it into the other radio and see if that makes a difference. I'll turn all this off and I'll take that out and swap it into the other radio. We'll see what it does. I've swapped that volume control over and it's... it's um, Line it up. Same as the other volume control that was there before that. So well, this radio is just different. I don't really understand what else I can do. I'm going to permanently fit this one because it fits the knob better than the replacement one I had. I'm going to leave that in there, but uh, it's still a mystery to me. Just cleaning up the excess adhesive here and this is taking it off pretty easily and I should be able to get around the back there so I'll just continue with that. Alright, I'm going to uh, prepare this up for paint and I've got a paint that kind of matches so I'm going to paint that eventually. There's still some bits of plastic missing and clearly there's a gap in here that needs to be filled. So I'm going to have to try and fill that and I'm going to have to try and paint it or something to cover it. I've got some fine wet and dry here. I'm just going to see what happens when I rub this back. It's got a bit of water on it. Alright, I've sanded that uh, fairly level now, so uh, yeah, a little bit more there and there, but uh, yes, that's not bad. Now this end's got a fair bit more work in it, but I'll just sand that away as well. Now this end here's come up pretty good. It's a little bit low there. I, I'll have to keep going, I think. I'm going to leave this at the moment. I'll wait till that other repair dries, and then I'll work out how I'm going to do this. This has been here for 24 hours. I'll see if I can get it apart. I did run a knife through this yesterday before it went hard. Just cut that clear tape, make sure that's not holding it back. Yeah. 
There we go. I'll round that off and make it look a bit prettier and uh, get rid of all this uh, overflow here. And that's good. I think that'll be a good repair. I've sculpted that little support there. It's not very pretty, but uh, it'll do the job. It's doing what it has to do. Uh, the aluminium here, I'm going to spray it with some etch primer to prepare it for some paint. And I've done the same with these guys here, so I'm just going to spray them with a bit of etch primer. I'll leave it overnight, and in the morning we can put some undercoat on it and top coat it. Alright, I'll leave these overnight. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning and welcome back. Last night I came out and gave this a coat of uh, plastic primer. It's clear so you can't see it. I've got some top coat here. I'm going to give it a spray. It doesn't match very well, but it's all I could get in a spray pack. But it's inside the case, so it's not critical. Colour's not that bad actually, um, but I'll let it dry and we'll see what it looks like. Now while that's drying, uh, there's a, a little hole there where the plastic's missing and I'm going to try something out. The radio I got at the club auction had a bit of the original case still attached to the back of it and I've put it in some acetone overnight and it should make a putty type consistency I'm hoping. I'm going to pour off the acetone and see what we've got. So it has left me with a like a pliable bit of plastic. Hmm. I think some of the dyes come out of it, which isn't going to help. All right, uh, I'll see what I can do. So I'm going to try and push some in there. I'm not sure this is going to work. Right, I'm going to leave that. Now I've got this idea off the internet. Uh, they said about an hour or so that should go back to its original state. If that's the case and it comes out alright, I'll just run a little knife around the crack here and do the whole thing and then sand it back and hopefully it'll look reasonable. That's been about an hour so it um, looks pretty hard. Let's try sanding it and see what it does. That's not too bad. It's under flush and that's why it's a bit white. Uh, I reckon if I fill it up properly, I reckon it'll come out alright. Alright, I'll do what I said, I'm going to scrape that out and I'll fill it with the plastic, we'll see what happens. Now that didn't come out quite as neat as I'd hoped, but uh, I'll let it dry and uh, sand it off, we'll see how it comes up. Uh, in the meantime, this paint on the inside's dried, I'll just get rid of this bit of bit of tape and see how it looks. Yeah, that's not too bad. Hands up anyone that thought it was going to be too red and I've got my hand up. This has been here for most of the day. The bridge broke this morning. I had to go and buy a new one. So I'll try sanding it off to see what happens. Yeah, that's it. It's um, left a pink line which is I kind of thought it might because some of the dye came out of the uh, plastic when it melted it. It's got a bit of polish here. I'll just see what happens if I polish it. Well, that's a little disappointing. I really hoped that it would come out darker than that. I'll keep working on this a little bit, but it's, it's going to have to be better than that. Unfortunately, that's as good as I can get it. I've played with this for quite a while. Uh, this end, I actually filled it up with a paint that was fairly close to this and uh, sanded it back but it just comes back this white color so so unfortunately that's as good as it's going to get yeah it's pretty disappointing I'm back at my desk now I'm just going to put the speaker in but this was in the plastic bag of little parts that came with the radio and I think that sits there and it's to stop the uh, glare from the globes coming up so before I put the speaker in I'll glue this back in Got that piece of felt in and it's dry, I'll just put the speaker in. Now there's some little screws and brackets to put on here, I'll just put those on. And 
All right, I'll push this home. There's just two screws to hold the chassis in on the bottom. I'm just putting the back on. This is a HMV model 6151. It's built in Australia in about uh, 1954. As I said at the start of the video, this flat, thin, upright sort of style was popular at the time. And it's come up okay. Uh, I've got a new dial glass. The front of it looks terrific. The repairs on the back are structurally excellent. This, I think they're, they're going to hold forever. Unfortunately, I couldn't achieve the finish that I wanted on these uh, crack repairs. So I'm going to have to work on that. Now, I did say to the owner, I'm not going to spend too much time on the, on the repairs. I'll glue it all back together. And that's what I've done. So I fulfilled what I said I would do. But it's disappointing to me to produce such a poor effort. This volume control is working very well now. Um, yeah, it's perfectly controllable. So the result on that was quite good. The radio works very well. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, so it works very nicely. And it sounds good too. Very, very nice sound on this. Now, this video probably wasn't all that interesting and I apologise for that. If you did get something out of it, I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure. <laughs>